Thomas Paine, Thomas Paine, Thomas Paine, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin. These men spoke up for what they thought was right. From their courage came such documents as the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. United States. From their willingness to speak what was sometimes unpopular but right, we enjoy such liberties as freedom of speech, the right to keep and bear arms, and freedom of religion. There are those who still wish to oppress our freedoms, and there are still patriots willing to stand up and defend life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Men like Zeb Bell, who honor our founding fathers and what they stood for. It's now time for Zeb at the Ranch, speaking up and defending your freedoms. Brought to you by Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers and all of the other great advertisers on the program. And now, Zeb Bell. You know that little thing inside your head that keeps you from saying things that you shouldn't? Yeah, you know what I mean. The problem is, I don't have one of those. Good morning, everybody. Here comes Kate Smith. And God bless America, followed by a patriot. Come on, patriots call in with a Pledge of Allegiance, now more so than ever. Good morning. And a good, good morning to you, and safe driving to you, too, out there. Welcome to the program. I'm Zeb Bell, Zeb at the Ranch, with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations with all the tires you need for whatever the weather throws at you, along with our friends at Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley, helping you get back to being you, and Greystone Crossing in the and senior living at 1221 21st Street in Hayburn. Seniors living the good life with friends. Right now, let's go to the phone line and have a patriot with our Pledge of Allegiance. Good morning. Top of the morning, laddie. My friend. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Well, there you go, and there you have it, and there he is. Thank you. Call back in a little bit, old buddy. I'd appreciate it. He's gone. <laughs> Good morning. Time for the weather, brought to you by K&R Rental at 256 South, 600 West of Hayburn. You know, Roger and the crew have all the rental of the best of tools and equipment for whatever you need to finish any kind of a project. That's not brag. That's a fact. I've been there. I've seen everything. My goodness sakes. They can help you. They will help you for both the long and short-term rental of equipment. Call them if you have questions. You're not sure what you need? Call them. Talk to them. They'll help you out six seven eight three one two two k and r rental on the burley paul highway and right now here's gina with the weather if you don't have to be out on the roadway for today i would highly suggest you just stay put here's a look at your weather forecast we are expecting more snow total daytime accumulations of one to three inches factor in that wind we definitely have some drifting snow especially out in the counties we are expecting a high of about 33 for today. Tonight, so snow showers are going to be tapering off just a little bit. We are expecting another inch of snow for this evening. We are expecting a low right around 15 for tomorrow. A day of reprieve, partly sunny skies, high of 30. Still going to be breezy for Wednesday night. Mostly cloudy skies, low of 22. Thursday, mostly cloudy, high of 38. And back to snow showers for Thursday night with a low of 26. That's a look at your weather for Zeb at the Ranch. Thank you, Gina. I appreciate it. And brought to you by K&R Rental at 256 South, 600 West of Hayburn. I urge you to stop in or give them a call for the tools and equipment you need to finish any kind of a project. The number, 678-3122. Or stop in. They're right there. Easy to find on the Burley Paul Highway. K&R Rental. I want to remind you, too, about our dear friends, and they are at Daryl's Cleaners. And, uh, boy, I tell you what, I go through a pile of shirts and Wranglers and everything else, and I want them looking good. Well, that's the place to go, Daryl's Cleaners, 1223 Albion Avenue in Burley. And uh, they've been doing my clothes for a long, long time, and I know you've been going in there, too. And you stop in today. Work with the best. They'll help you. Daryl's Cleaners, 1223 Albion. Avenue in Burley, you stop in and tell them Zeb sent you, okay? Uh, I've got a list of school closures, and 
and I'm going to go down the list as I have it. I can't answer any questions other than what has been provided me by the wonderful lady over at our stations, and that's Gina Jameson. Call her stand by. I'll be there in just a moment. Stand by. But here's what I have so far. School closures. Valley schools are closed. Filer schools are closed. Murtaugh schools are closed. Minidoka schools are closed. St. Edwards in Twin Falls closed. Lighthouse Christian in Twin closed. And Cassius schools, they're going to start maybe at 10 o'clock. They're going to have a two-hour delay and assess the situation and go from there. Heritage School in Jerome, same thing. Two-hour delay till 10 o'clock and then assess what's going to go on. And CSI Minicastia Center in Burley is doing a delayed start also and won't begin classes until 10 a.m. due to the weather. Don't ask me about any other schools because I do not know. And if we hear of anything, uh, I'm sure that Gina will bounce in and put it on the radio or send me another note. But that's what I have currently. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning. It's the Barley Senior Center today. We're having beef stroganoff and all of the trimmings and yummy dessert. Uh, just five bucks will get you all you can eat. Well, it sounds to me like it's the best buy in town, and it's right there at the Senior Center, and it helps promote the Senior Center, and we certainly appreciate our dear friend Joe Taylor. Uh, I noticed you're a little hesitant to say anything about yummy dessert, but it'll be good. It'll be good. I don't know what it is. They keep it to the last thing. Okay, well, Joe will send anybody, everybody over to the Senior Center on Overland. God bless you, man. Thank you so much. Thank you. We appreciate you. All right, my friend. Thank you. I want to remind everybody, too, about Ramsey Heating and Electric. And they're at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. And they open at 730 in the morning till 5, Monday through Friday. Literally for all your heating, cooling, and electrical needs. They are the place. Absolutely. They've been in business almost seven decades. They care. They know and they want to serve you. All you have to do is either call them at 678-0459 or stop in at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley, Ramsey Heating and Electric, where they provide warm winters and cool summers. And a real quick note, too, about our friends over at Denny's Restaurant, America's Diner. I know Thomas called the other day. They've got another brand spanking new menu at Denny's Restaurant. Really, really delicious opportunities like Parmesan chicken, sizzling skillet, and the strawberry crepes. If you haven't had those, you better get in and enjoy. And uh, they've got everything right there for the over 55 menu. They've got some delicious menu choices. You better check it out at America's Diner. America's Diner, Denny's Restaurant at 611 North Overland in Burley and 291 Poline Road in Twin Falls. Really nice people. All right, calls are welcome and appreciated. 436 2241 927 4587 This little note came across my desk earlier this morning at about 5 o'clock and it absolutely infuriated me to the point where you want to punch somebody right in the nose. I'm serious. I am, and I'm going to state this once and for all very emphatically, I am fed up with a colorization of America. I am fed up with, oh, well, there weren't enough numbers of blacks, or, oh, my, there's not enough numbers of browns or yellows. There's too many whites. Well, stop the presses. When it comes to athletics, look at any football team on the offense or defense. How many whites do you see in comparison? Use that in basketball. Use it almost anywhere. Why do we always have to have a colorization of America and say, oh, well, that's not fair. Listen to this and see if you wouldn't get as mad as I am about it. The USA Today opinion editor for that paper claimed that President Trump was standing next to too many white men as he addressed the situation in Iran. And this absolute jackass U.S. opinion editor said that it makes a message 
to the world that only people who can handle national security are white men. Stop it! Absolutely stop it, you insane individuals! Stop this colorization. Stop this segregation. Stop it. You are idiots for promoting it. Some of my very best friends are black. Whoa. Some of my very best friends are brown. But this this deal of saying, well, he was standing up there with too many white men, and it made the inference that only whites can handle a crisis. Go away. Fade into obscurity. You're an idiot, and you shouldn't be talking or writing. What are your thoughts about this? It's absolutely insane. And Deanne, if you're available, I've got a call coming in on my cell phone. I've got to make a note here, folks. Stand by. Uh, please call the home number, if you would, please. I'm on the air. Thank you. And uh, they just called Deanne on my cell phone. Call it, that number. You know what it is. Uh, thank you very much. We had a little personal note there that had to be taken care of. What are your thoughts on this? This, this absolute idiocy of, oh, there are too many white men. I've had enough. We are living in a world that is so fractured because of the left and Democrats and the idiocy that's going on in politics today. And I, I'm pointing my finger at both sides of the aisle, really. L listen to Nancy Pelosi. Listen to this. Oh, she says, I love everybody. I pray for everybody. No, she doesn't. She came out yesterday walking down the hall, and a reporter asked her a question, and she turned with her wrathful, hate-filled eyes and said, I want to impeach Trump for life. She's just full of hate. The hatred, the vitriol against President Trump is unbelievable. The Democrats are worried sick that they have nothing, nothing that can challenge Trump in 2020, so they're going to try to win by getting Trump impeached what a bunch of losers they're losers the left can't stand trump's great economy they can't stand his toughness that is working with rogue nations that are used to having their way they can't stand that trump is very successful at getting nato to pay their fair share and the left is nothing but a pit of hate prove me wrong I'll give you an example. Last night at the college football championships for the NCAA between LSU and Clemson, President Trump and First Lady were there seated in a uh, VIP box. Okay? Before the game started, they walked down on the field for the national anthem. The crowd absolutely went berserk in honor of the president four more years four more years usa usa they loved him so he go hold on caller let me finish my point so he goes back up to the box with mrs trump and actor vince vaughn came by and he's a comedy actor that has done some really he's done some really good work i got to admit that he came by he's not a republican and he was up in the booth, and he was acknowledged to be let in so that he could talk to and say hello to President Trump. The left went completely bonkers. They were falling off their jackasses and saying that Vaughn should be fired from all of his contracts because he associated with the president. This is completely wacko, folks. <sighs> Call her, call me down. Well, Zeb, you know, they can impeach all these public officials. How come we're not going after this criminal lady, Pelosi, and these Democrats that are creating this phony, phony, phony propaganda war on our president? That's treason. They ought to be gone after them and kicked them out of office forever, where they can never, ever, 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 for any reason, run. They're nothing but a disgrace to the world. 
is just sickening what they're doing. Well, add one more name to that fray this morning. I'll tell you one that absolutely makes my stomach ache, and that's John Kerry. John Kerry came out, and he's an advocate an advocate for praising Iran and the Ayatollah and Soleimani and denigrating and downplaying and being disgusting against President Trump. Our country was almost at war a week ago. Our country was absolutely having to stand face-to-face, toe-to-toe against Iran and let them know that they're not going to be terrorist nation. They're not going to be causing all this bloodshed and terror around the world. And yet, John John Kerry, a despicable man that shouldn't be doing anything except putting ketchup on his hamburger, he comes out and he absolutely denounces President Trump in favor of giving praise to Iran. Jerry, these are sick, insane individuals. I absolutely agree, and he shouldn't even be putting ketchup on his hamburger because he's too damn dumb to know how. I, I'm i really emotional about this this morning because America is absolutely letting idiots, idiots, and they are. People don't like the name calling. The left is comprised of idiots that are trying to destroy this country, and I'll stand behind it. I hope you'll stand behind me. I will, and you know Kerry's book that he wrote on the environment, almost every single page has turned out to be a nothing but a lie. Oh, John Kerry's not... That's been proven. I just have... That guy is to the world. I couldn't agree more, and I'm so livid about what's going on in this world. The, The left is making such stupid, insane, irrational statements. I mean, going after Vince Vaughn because he said hello to the president and the first lady, and now they want to have a revocation of all of his Hollywood contracts. That's nuts. I'll give you something else, Jerry Voss. 93%. That is the figure that has been uh, approved by the media right now. 93% of the news stories are against Trump. Absolutely 93% show hate and rancor against our president. 93%, Jerry, that's ridiculous. Well, if they aren't going to tell the truth, they ought to be shut down. We don't, you know, they've got the right to print what they want, but they do not have the right to print lies. And that is a disgrace to this nation also. Absolutely. Jerry, I always appreciate your call. You're a dear friend. Thank you so much. You have a great day, and calm down a little. <laughs> I will, my friend. Thank you. Get on the ice. No, I won't. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Bye-bye. All right, sir. Caller number two, I'll be right there. i got to pay some bills quickly. I want to remind everybody that the Minicasha Chamber of Commerce annual installation banquet will be on January 30th at the Best Western Burley Inn and Convention Center, and the doors open at 6 p.m. We'll see you there. It's an evening of dinner, auction, installation of board of directors, honoring a lot of people in the area, and this is all going to be on the 30th. For tickets, call the chamber office at 679 497 you know that number, 679-4973. Don't forget, Minicash Chamber of Commerce Annual Installation Banquet. And, of course, our dear friends at Dino Septic Service. My, 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 they do the job that you and I don't want to do. No, thank you. I'll call. I'll call the number, 436-6526 or 678-1638. I'm talking fast for your friendly service. I know that because they've done some work for us. These people are are good. Septic tank pumping, backhoe services, liquid waste removal, uh, water and sewer lines installed, Dino Septic Service, nobody better. Mm -mm. Call them and they'll pull in the yard with a big truck that says smells cargo on the way. Dino Septic Service. All right, calls are welcome and appreciated. 436-224-4186-927-4587. What do you think about this? I mean, come on. Come on. This USA Today opinion editor coming out with something so stupidly outlandish as, well, when Donald Trump was standing up there at the podium, all the people in uniform were white with the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and uh, that gave the inference that only people of white skin can handle national security crisis. What? This guy or lady, the opinion editor, should be looking for a job. And that's cleaning out horse stalls. 
Don't call me for the job. But anyway, they shouldn't even be writing an opinion. This is more divisiveness that's going on in America today. More. And then the left. And I'm going to talk to Attorney James Herson about this later on this morning. These loons, these people that are incapable of sitting down and having any common sense, going after an actor that is nice enough to drop by the uh, VIP booth, if you will, say hello to the president and Mrs. Trump, and by the way, he is not a Republican, he's independent and a libertarian, and uh, he gets hailed by the left as saying that he should lose all of his contracts because he was talking to President Trump. This is insanity. Caller, good morning, you're on the air. Yes, good morning, Zeb. Uh, you know, this thing with Nancy Pelosi, she should be doing her business from a mental institution because this woman has shot her rod. She's nothing more than a major terrorist, in a way, a political terrorist, and is going to cause more problems for this country than the enemy outside of our country. I, I've i lost all my respect, if I had any at all, for the Speaker of the House. I think she's nothing more than a little old lady that's on the verge of senility and grasping for more power in her shadowing moments as a politician. But what she's doing is just perpetrating more hate. Tony, I'm fed up with what's going on in America. I, I just absolutely do not like having people tell me that we have to accept uh, groups of people into our community because, oh, for the sake of diversity, change the culture, change the costs, and change the job employment availability, all for diversity. Give me a break. I'm fed up with this stuff. Well, you know, this diversity, as far as I'm concerned, what I see going on now, that country is going to be divided into so many different countries because these people that want diversity are not going to assimilate to America's ways. So they'll come in here and they'll start their own states or communities where American people are not welcome. That's right. Uh, I'm just livid about this. Uh, hooray for Texas. Hooray for Texas for standing up Governor Greg Abbott and telling the government, no, we're not going to take any more of your refugees. No. Not until other states start doing their fair share because we're not going to be a dumping pit for all these refugees. I thank him. I think he's doing a good job. And look at Twin Falls, the city of Twin Falls. Oh, come on in, come on in, come on in, everybody. Twin Falls is a city of less than 50,000 people, and they want to just increase the numbers, fragment our diversity, our culture, I should say, with what they want as far as diversity. And even Governor Little, when I get him on the phone, I'm going to question him about this. I don't believe it's the right thing to do. I seen this happen back east and I I'm convinced that Twin Falls is going to become a sanctuary city. And from what I'm saying and what I've experienced from back east, it's happening. Yeah. Well you will not get an argument from me. I'm just I'm sick of color playing a part in jobs and the application for jobs. The best person, man or woman, regardless of color of skin, should get the job. I don't give a rip about the joint chiefs of staff. If they're all white, so be it. If they're 50% black or Asian, so be it. I don't care. But don't criticize white people in this anti-white America right now. Oh, you're white. Well, you're, you've been privileged. Baloney. I've been privileged at all. I've worked for every damn thing I got. Well, there's quality people all over. No matter whether you're black or you're white, quality does not come in any particular color. It's the individual. That's right. Now you got me all stirred up. i got to calm down and count to 100 backwards. Thank you, Tony. God bless you. All right. Thank you. Uh, calls are welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Don't forget, uh, tomorrow we're going to be talking to a lady that's going to tell us all about the big happenings on Thursday at the 2020 Idaho Irrigation Equipment Show at the Best Western Burley Inn and Convention Center. It's going to be this Thursday, the 16th, from 8 in the morning to 4.30 p.m. It's free, no registration. They're going to have over 50 irrigation equipment uh, manufacturers, 
dealers, distributors of landscape and ag irrigation products will be there. Educational classes. I've looked through the list. they got a lot of good ones there. So don't forget, this Thursday at the Burley Best Western 2020 Idaho Irrigation Equipment Show. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit of a lighter side to the diversity. We have the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker. We've got the Catholic, the Protestant, the Baptist, the Mormon. So I think that's plenty of diversity. Why does everything on the left all of a sudden in the last two years have to be anti-white and, oh, these poor black people, oh, these poor brown people and yellow people, well, they're not seen in a picture with the president. Why? That's shameful. I'm fed up with this. And when they are seen in the picture, then they're an Uncle Tom. Yeah, would you care to tell me, out of your memory, what color skin Condoleezza Rice had? A really pretty, I don't know. She was a, she was in very polite fashion, using one of the three classifications of mankind, she was a Negro lady, a black-skinned lady that was so smart, is still so smart, and so efficient in government, I wanted to see her run against Obama back in 2008, because I think she could have whooped him, and I was in favor of having her run, but I am fed up with people saying, oh, because you're white you're sinful that's idiocy exactly i mean i didn't grow up with a a silver spoon in my mouth neither did i and i remember the movie and i can't think of the name of it where they put the one of the one of the space ships scanning thing which one it was into orbit and the three women who got those those men up there and back were black. Yeah. They pulled them out of the out of the secretary pool or whatever. I don't care. I don't care myself, dear lady. I don't care if somebody is chartreuse, if you if there is such a color. I think there is. As long as they're qualified to do the job, let them do the job. This idi- this incompetency. That's going on in sports. Well, uh, there's too many white coaches, so we've got to put in some black coaches. Bunk! Hire the ones that do the best job, and the rest of them can sit there and suck on their thumb. Oh, yeah. Well, do you remember when they were going to put um, diversify the air traffic controllers? It doesn't matter if you're capable of doing the job. Yeah. Well, I don't want to be up in the air if I don't, if the, my air traffic controller is the right color. You know, this is something that just absolutely fries my bacon, and I think if most people with any kind of common sense will think about it, it's about high time we told the left to take a very long walk off a very short pier. Exactly. God bless you for your call. Thank you. All right, thank you. Don't forget every Monday the uh, Great Big Idaho Legislative Update, and it's sponsored by Handy Truck Lines. Really nice people serving businesses all over the Northwest. That's at 1030 on Mondays right here. Zeb at the Ranch. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, sir. I hope. You hear me? I said I hope it is, Doug, because I'm frustrated as to the stupidity that's going on in our country. Well, I'm frustrated too, but God has created a good morning. It's beautiful outside. I like this time of year. But back to the problems in Washington, D.C., and our politicians. When we start holding people accountable for the breaking of the laws and the things that they do, until then, it's just going to keep getting worse and worse. When the government officials, the senators and the representatives and all those swear in saying they will uphold the Constitution, and when they fail to do so, need to be drummed out of office, then, or held accountable for the laws they break, until then, it's just going to get worse and worse, though. 
Yeah, but, you know, I watched that game last night, and I felt good watching the beginning of the game with the president and the first lady walking out onto the field for the national anthem at the college football championships and the chance of four more years, four more years, USA, USA, 70,000 people were there plus, and, and then all the greatness of what took place last night. It made you feel proud to be an American with such a great American spectacle on nationwide TV, the president there, the first lady, and then Vince Vaughn, one of the actors uh, that's well-known, walks into the presidential booth and wanted to shake his hand. And then all hell breaks loose with the left because, oh, how could a man from Hollywood lower himself and talk to the president, and then they demand his contracts be null and void? This is completely off the rails, Doug. It is. It really is. It's off the rails. Uh, oh, oh, shoot. I went blank there. But the, the left is mad. And they are very, very mad because they had eight years of Obama trying to tear this country down and failed. They had implemented all kinds of left rules and regulations and you know, the taxes and the Obamacare and all that stuff, and they have failed. Yeah, I would be mad, too, they, if, uh, all the things I believed in, and I don't know why they believe in it, but if all the things I believed in was being flushed down the toilet by a man has common sense and business knowledge. Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, please explain to me. I consider myself to be fairly intelligent. I've done my due diligence to study these stories all day and early this morning. Would you tell me, I'll use another example here. Here's Bernie Sanders, okay? He's nearly 80 years old. He's had a heart attack, very serious. He is a far-left communist socialist. He's absolutely a kook out in left field about destroying our Constitution and our values. He wants to give higher education away for free. He wants to provide health care for everyone for free, which means we're going to have outlandishly high taxes and probably break most Americans. Now, this guy might become the Democratic nominee for the presidency. And Lord help us all, they, he might even be elected as president. What is the matter with the mindset of America today that they're even thinking about putting somebody like this in as president? Well, look at his following. At their age, they have been indoctrinated in the public school system when the government tells you what you can teach and what you can't. They have been indoctrinated into believing that America is bad. Twenty years ago, Bernie Sanders, with his statements and his stand, and the same is to be said for Elizabeth Warren, they wouldn't have been able to win a, a policy post in their hometown to be a dog catcher. No, they wouldn't have been. But the indoctrination, look at the college campuses and what they're preaching. Yep. I mean, they aren't allowing free flow of ideas if it's against what the liberals think and believe then they don't allow it so the kids aren't getting both sides of the story they're getting one side and it's being drilled into them they're taking all the things that america has sinned and which america is not perfect no country no human being is perfect there was only one perfect human being on this world, and they crucified him. Yeah, and I'm fed up with uh, school systems. I really am. I don't care if it's local. I don't care if it's state. I don't care if it's national. I'm sick of uh, the bureaucracy in schools from the principal, the superintendent, and all the school board members saying, well, yeah, we're going to curtail the Pledge of Allegiance because it takes too much time. That has to be, honestly, one of the... The absolute most brainless statements I've ever heard in my life that the Pledge of Allegiance takes too much time in the morning 17 seconds 17 seconds and some schools say well we don't want to fly the American flag because we don't want to offend somebody I don't care who's offended this is our country not theirs exactly if they're offended by the flag of the nation that they live in 
They need to look at the nation of flags out there and say, oh, I like that one, and go live there. Period. Uh, it's just an insane to me to think that we're at this state in our civilization, if you want to use that word, that a completely buffoonish USA Today newspaper opinion editor would condemn the president and this administration because there were too many white men in the picture. Oh, Doug, come on. I, well, that's all they've got. That's that is their their argument against this man. Oh. I mean, and look at how he has been Carson, and look at the gal that comes on TV now and then that was that's in his in the HUD, you know, that's helping Ben Carson with yep. the housing. Yep. She was working for him in his private organization. She he had moved her up to a a good position of authority. So I mean, President Trump is not racist. He is far from that because he's got awards from oh, uh, what's his name? Oh, Al Sharpton. Yeah. At a deal where he got an award for helping the black communities give, given to President Trump. I tell you though, Doug, this country right now, and I mean these words, we need to pray for our country. We need to pray for sane minds to keep control and regain control. We are going into a pit of snakes, socialism. We're going into a pit of snakes where everything has to be a color society. We're going into a pit of snakes of hatred. They don't like the president, so they're going to do anything they can, legal or illegal, to get him out of there. I mean, we're in a pit of snakes, and we need to pray for this country. Exactly. We do. And if you want to talk about being equal, where's where's the argument that there's not enough whites in pro basketball? Well, any sport. Yeah. Where's the argument? Well, if you're I, good enough to take that position, you should have it. Man, the coaching staff is the same way. I don't care. I don't want to even I don't even want to title part of this even sports. It's life in general. I don't give a rip what color a person is as long as they are the best for the job. Exactly. I got to run. I got to run. By their character. I don't look at what color eyes or hair or skin or anything. It's their character and how they treat me is how I see them. Absolutely. I got to run and I appreciate your call, old buddy. Thank you so much. One more thing we ought to pray for, sir, is that all those who have done evil and tried to take this nation down be exposed for everybody to see. I couldn't agree more. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. All right, buddy. Senior centers. God all right. bless. I just got a note. Thank you, Deanne, that all. All Cache County schools are closed for the day. Deanne just handed me this note, and I really appreciate her staying on top of this. All Cache County schools are closed for the day. I want to remind everybody about Barry Equipment and Rental, sales, service, and parts, and they've got a brand spanking new inventory at their stores at 159 West Highway 30 in Burley, 465 Addison Avenue West in Twin, and the Napa location. And they've got the Bobcat tractors. They're back. So all you got to do is stop in, and if you need equipment for lifting and digging and pushing and carrying, they've got everything there for you. Don't know how to run the equipment? No worry they'll teach you these are good folks that really care at berry equipment and rental excellent lease rates excellent financing programs burley twin falls and napa berry equipment and rental time for the weather and then i'll take some more of your calls and the weather brought to you by our dear friends over at mount harrison audiology and hearing aids if you're noticing that maybe your hearing isn't what it should be, you know, like, huh? What'd you say, Martha? And she says the same back to you. Maybe you better make an appointment for hearing screening today. And the number to call, 312-0957. That number again, 312-0957. Believe me, they know what they're doing. They are experts with diagnostic testing to help your hearing at Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. And right now, here's Gina with the weather. 
If you don't have to be out on the roadway for today, I would highly suggest you just stay put. Here's a look at your weather forecast. We are expecting more snow. Total daytime accumulations of one to three inches. Factor in that wind, we definitely have some drifting snow, especially out in the counties. We are expecting a high of about 33 for today. Tonight, those snow showers are going to be tapering off just a little bit. We are expecting another inch of snow for this evening. We are expecting a low right around 15 for tomorrow. A day of reprieve, partly sunny skies, high of 30. Still going to be breezy for Wednesday night. Mostly cloudy skies, low of 22. Thursday, mostly cloudy. High of 38 and back to snow showers for Thursday night with a low of 26. That's a look at your weather for Zebeth Ray. Thank you, Gina. Appreciate it. And all you do, Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. I'm telling you, folks, don't put it off. Go to the phone, call them at 312-0957 and start taking care of your hearing health today. 312-0957, Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. Calls are welcome, 436-2244. 4-1-8-6-6-9-2-7-4-5-8-7. By the way, we were talking about that college football championship game last night. Uh, there was no doubt about it. Uh, once they got the wheels turning and the engine started and everything, LSU, Louisiana State University, really put the clamps on Clemson last night, 42-25. to But both teams, both teams, it should be noted, had Excellent young college quarterbacks. They were good. And tonight, if you're running out of something to do, and maybe you're suffering from sleep deprivation, and you're looking for a way to nod off, I have a great medical idea for you. If you need sleep tonight, yawn. Another Democratic debate, yawn. Before the Iowa caucus, yawn and snore. Calls welcome four three six two two four four one eight six six nine two seven four five eight seven. A lot of folks have written me over the last couple of years, and I really do appreciate all their notes and their emails and everything. But this one disturbed me quite a bit when I got it yesterday. Not going to mention any names. I'm just going to give you the gist of the story in the letter. And this person was talking about his daughter coming home from school, and this was in the Cassia County school system. His daughter came home from school and said to her dad that her teacher had mentioned to the class that she had watched something on TV explaining why President Trump is so bad and why everyone needs to vote for a Democrat. Hmm. That leaves me cold. It leaves me with a lot of uh, questions, and it leaves me with a little bit more than the hair standing up on my that back of my neck. This teacher, I'm not sure who it was, telling the class that she saw something on television that said uh, why President Trump is so bad and everyone needs to vote for Democrat, that's out of place. Absolutely out of place. And if I find out definitely who it was and what the circumstances were, I will certainly put it on my program. I don't like the left trying to indoctrinate and sway through the usage of children the vote for our presidency of the United States. Your thoughts? Give me a call, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. In case you hadn't heard about it, uh, Prince Harry and his wife Meghan, who is a citizen of the United States, and married Prince Harry and became a part of the royal family over in Britain, London, And by the way, this story goes underneath the heading of who really gives a doggone. I don't care. But um, I could not have less of any worry about the royal family and what they're doing. It doesn't make any difference to me. 
They're all a figurehead anyway. Stand by, caller. I'll be right with you. I don't care if Prince Harry, who says they are going to become commoners, uh huh. I don't care if he ends up hurting goats. But neither one of them, Meghan or Harry, like President Trump. And one thing that stood out, and I remember this being said on the newscast, is that when President Trump visited over in England and the Queen put together a great big dinner for President Trump, and they get along very well, Prince Harry and Meghan decided that they would not go. Hmm. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Zeb, I thought that was a really a good football game last night. And the, the frosting on the cake was the Trumps being there. I thought Mrs. Trump was dressed really nice, looked really nice, and so did President Trump. Looked really good. I was glad they were there. Well, I commented on this earlier in this hour, and I totally agree with you. And uh, 70,000 plus people were sitting there chanting, four more years, four more years, USA, USA. And it was a great event, which makes the Democrats want to crawl back into their little cave even further. They don't have the sense or the gumption to crawl in anywhere. The Democrats don't. I believe you're right. I I just have no respect for that party at all. I have nothing good to say about them, nor will I have my arm twisted to say something good about them. Well, my cowboy poetry won't let me talk about Pelosi, so have a good day, Zeb, and we'll see you later. Okay, Bob. (laughs) Needless to say, I didn't ask him for his cowboy poetry either. Appreciate it. Calls welcome. 436-224-1-866-927-4587. Major League Baseball. i got to get this story in. Uh, I know a lot of you probably, you may be a baseball fan, you may not be a baseball fan, but oh my goodness, the so-and-so has hit the fan. Woo! There's been a lot of firings, especially the manager and coach of the Houston Astros, and now they're looking at the Boston Red Sox for possible firings. Why? The These two teams have been known now, and it's proven that they used electronic devices, electronic devices to steal signs at the 2017 World Series. Now, you're probably saying, electronic devices? Stealing signs? Yeah. This is where it's kind of a crossover road here. In baseball, it's ever since the game started, people have been trying to steal signs with the naked eye. That is legal. That's legal. A guy on second base looks in at the catcher, and he notices that the catcher gave the pitcher a curveball sign. He's going to quickly relay that somehow with a visual sign to the batter at the plate. I mean, I've been in baseball all my life. I know what I'm talking about here. However, the rules are that you can't use electronic devices to steal signs. And with the electronic devices being used, let's just say it this way, there's a whole lot of trouble in River City, and they're even firing the trombone man. (laughs) Oh, boy. This is going to be a bigger deal. And there's going to be more than just one or two or three firings, if you will. So Major League Baseball, another scandalous story. I want to remind you about our friends at your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Absolutely. They've got all the tires for you and your vehicles for whatever the weather throws at you. And, boy, the weather's been throwing a lot at us here of late. Don't forget they've got all the tread designs, all the sizes for all your vehicles. That's absolutely the truth. And uh, tire chains, you betcha. And they've got it full instructions on how to put the chains on. They've got the best in brakes service with highly trained brake technicians, front end alignment, shocks and struts, batteries. You know, I just want to urge you to stop in and work with people that care about you, care about your safety, and care about providing the best in service to you. That's your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family and Paul, Daniel on Line in Twin Falls, and Trent on Overland in Burley. The best, your Magic Valley, Les Schwab Tire Centers.
Next hour, we are going to have a very, very interesting uh, conversation with Tom Pyle with the American Energy Alliance. And then at 930, I am ecstatic about this, and I mean this. He's a dear, dear friend to me and my wife and this program, and he was battling a severe uh, form of cancer. They didn't know if he'd make it or not to the Christmas holidays, and now he is back. He's written another new book. I am so proud to have Dr. Gerard Lomero coming on at 9.30 this morning with his new book, Real World Socialism. And, boy, he's going to knock it out of the park. We're looking forward to that. Right now, let's send it over to Wheels. I'll be back in seven minutes. Oh, my goodness sakes. Good morning. A ugly, kind of an ugly sky over to the west. And, of course, we've had a lot of school closures, of which I'm sure you've probably already found out about. And it uh, looks like we might get some more snow. Zeb at the Ranch, I'm Zeb Bell, along with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations working and serving you, along with Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley, helping you get back to being you. And, of course, Greystone Crossing Senior Living at 1221 21st Street in Hayburn. Seniors living the good life with friends. Right now, this good word for Western Waste. From the canyons of the Snake River. They are such nice people, and I'm going to try to get Joe and the crew on here to talk about the Power in Pink program, about enrolling in the Pink Cart Trash program. Uh, We want to trash cancer, and Western Way Services is doing all they can with this Pink Cart program to where portions of the proceeds are going to go right to fighting cancer. I think this is a wonderful idea, and you deserve to find out more about maybe changing your trash canister from... From the original gray color and get one of the pink ones and help fight and trash cancer through our friends at Western Way Services, 734-6969. You call them today and find out much more about it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I also want to acknowledge the fact of our dear friends at Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation. Hello, Nick. Hello, Josh. Hello, everybody over there at 1, uh, no, it's 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley. And the number to call to let them help you get back to being you, 6781191. Absolutely the best of people, the best of physical therapists, all the exercises, the use of that hydrotherapy pool, my goodness, don't put it off. If you're aching and paining, they can help, they will help. At Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation, call the number right now for an appointment, 6781191. Want to remind you again, coming up at the end of the month on the 30th, oh, we're going to have a ripping good time over at the Minicasha Chamber of Commerce Annual Installation Banquet on January 30th at the Best Western Burley Inn Convention Center. Mm-hmm. Doors open at 6 p.m., and it's going to be dinner, an auction, installation of board of directors, uh, honoring outstanding individuals. It's just going to be a night of fun. Call for tickets right now today. Don't put it off. 679-4973. January 30th. Minicasha Chamber of Commerce annual installation banquet. Woo! One more good word, and I'll bet you old Tom's sitting over there on the end of the phone going, when's he going to come to me? Just a moment. Don't forget Hanson Mortuary at 710 6th Street in Rupert with our dear friend Joel Hewer, the manager along with his family and his staff, serving you and your family. And when there's the passing of a loved one, they always provide the families they serve with the best possible support 
and comfort. And he wanted me to remind everybody about Memorial Headstones. Please talk to them at Hanson Mortuary. Call them and find out more about the Memorial Headstones for your loved ones. Number to call, 436-5636. That number again, 436-5636. And Joel Heward also serving you and your family at Morrison Payne Funeral Home on East Main in Burley. Wow, we're done. Okay, let's go to the American Energy Alliance. Tom Pyle, sorry to keep you waiting. Wake up, the alarm just went off. <laughs> no worries, Jeff. Good to hear from you. You know, it's such a treat to have you on the program again, Tom, and I'm going to put the onus back over on you. Did you have a particular subject matter that you want to talk about this morning, or can we kind of make it a free-for-all? We can make it a free-for-all, but I do want to mention that... Um we had a pretty good end of the year uh, with respect to energy and, and the federal government getting involved in our energy business in the form of President Trump uh, refusing to allow the electric vehicle tax credit expansion mm-hmm. uh, in the big budget deal last year. And I just wanted to give a shout out to the president and any of your listeners who helped uh, weigh in with him in, in support of that position. Tom, do you think, with your expertise on energy subjects, do you think that the American public in general really has given any five minutes of thought in their recliners about a transitioning away from a very efficient and plentiful supply of energy to going the wacky green energy with the solar and the wind, very inefficient, very unreliable. Has the American public really thought about how stupid this is? You know, the ones who've been impacted by it, um, yes, absolutely, uh, in the form of higher prices. You see in California, for example, they're paying 50% more for their electricity than the national average or uh, particularly their neighbor's gas prices at $1.50. You see it in places like the Midwest where we had some cold spells last year, and the utilities told them they couldn't raise their heat above 50 degrees for certain days because they couldn't get the gas through through the lack of pipeline infrastructure because of the green. So you no, know, yes and no. In other words, you see it in areas where these, these policies are having negative impacts. I only wish and hope that we... We catch it in other areas before uh, before it's too late and they get impacted as well. Well, and wheels over at the station. I need you to turn Mr. Pyle up so I can hear him a little better, please, if you would. Uh, Tom, uh, my concern is when we have power companies. And I use the term power in not only supplying power, but also the power they think they have over the public, like our illustrious Idaho power here in this state. They're nothing more than thugs and power mongers to the point where I've invited them on the program to talk about green energy that they say they're going to in the next few uh, 18, 15 years, whatever, and they won't even discuss it on my show. They're afraid they're underneath their desk and won't come on the program to talk about it, but yet they're going to put push and pull and maintain that green energy is the thing for the future, and they won't even discuss it. That's complete cowardice. Yeah, you know, it's, it's true, and, and it's unfortunate that a lot of the companies that are providing these resources aren't fighting back against these stupid policies. And that uh, the result is, is that their, their customers now, in a lot of ways, have become the government as opposed to us. Explain that just a little so my audience understands it purely right to the bottom end of the sentence. Go ahead. So if you know that what you um, are being asked to do by the government will, in the long run, hurt consumers, your rate payers, you should stand up. You should say, no, that's not a good idea. Unfortunately, what they have done, we've got a system where they accept all of these ridiculous mandates and forced forced uh, wind and solar and, and, and everything else and then they just go to their public utility commission and say hey we got to put all this yeah. wind online you need to give us a rate increase so we can wheel it over and get it into our grid even though they know in the long run that that's not a reliable way to do it and is more expensive for consumers so they should be fighting for consumers not saddling consumers with the cost of obeying their government 
Internet master. You know, and Tom, I'm one of the most hated people in southern Idaho when it comes to energy because I will always start and keep condemning Idaho Power and their revered personnel that live in this area for being cowards and not coming on and explaining right to the final dime how this is going to impact their uh, their rate payers. And uh, the one thing that really concerns me, and caller, stand by, I'll get your call in just a second. The one thing that really concerns me, Tom, is the land, the land that's got to be used for more enhancement for solar and those stupid wind turbines. I don't think we've even seen the tip of the iceberg. What are your thoughts? Yeah, look, every form of energy has trade-offs, right? Every form of energy. Wind and solar are a blight on our landscape. The, there's wind in particular has they have shown that the people who live near these windmills, it is impacting their health in a significant way. And they talk about how it's designed to help protect the planet. Well, how do you think those windmills are made? It's still steel. They still drive it over in a diesel truck. You know, I mean, there's still parts and components in there that are lubricants and things made made out of oil. So it, it's 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 become a religious thing. And it has become a symbol. Uh, coal oil and natural gas now increasingly have become like this demonic symbol mm -hmm. of this religion that is climate change. And that's really part of what's going on here. Yeah, I agree. We've got a caller, Tom, with a question or a comment. Caller, quickly, you're on the air. Well, over in Wyoming, uh, this is part of Idaho Power. They're going to close, and Zeb knows this very well, and so do most of these listeners. I don't know if you do, but they are closing a coal-fired power plant that's been maintained and, and had scrubbers put on it. It's up to date, and uh, they're doing it down in northern Nevada, too. But right over in Wyoming, I know for a fact that right where the uh, coal is, there's natural gas, and they could convert it. But they have no intentions of doing so. Now, here in in our small community, the uh, government is encouraging people to put have natural gas buses. And you see, the, the left hand doesn't know what the right is doing. I mean, you, I, it's insanity. And why shut down a perfectly good power plant anywhere that is working and functioning? And we know it's clean when you got India and China who are just going great guns with coal-fired power plants. I'll hang up. Uh, respond to the caller, Tom, if you would. He hit, the, he hit the nail on the head. Why are we closing these plants down? They're clean. They're efficient. They're reliable. Our air is, as, our air is cleaner today than it has been in the previous three decades. We are doing amazing things in this country with innovation, with technology. We care about the environment. We are already doing that. And yet now, for, for again, this climate change religion, uh, we are being asked to, to do things that just make no sense. And, you know, someday that power is going to be needed. We might not need it today, but someday the, the demand is going to go up, and we're not going to have these plants. That's right. These uh, utilities aren't going to spend the money to reopen them. Tom, what are we going to do? We're going to pay through the nose for no reason at all. Absolutely. Tom, let me ask you this. Uh, Don't shut these plants prematurely. Let them run their course at a minimum. Let's put sources of electricity that we choose, not the government. Absolutely. Tom, where are you calling from right now? Are you back in D.C.? Yes, sir. I'm in the swamp. Okay, let me ask you this. Today, your weather forecast, is it out of the normal, or is it in the same uh, average, if you will, for this time of the year, this time of the month back in D.C.? Tell me, please. Well, I've been living in D.C. now. I'm, I'm dating myself here for 20 years, and it's pretty much we get the same kind of weather. Some days it gets warm. Some days it gets cold. Some days it's seasonally warmer. Some days it's seasonally colder. But it all averages out, Zeb. I mean, this... This, this idea that the temperature has to be like the Truman Show, like a perfect 70 degrees with no wind and no clouds every single day, or it's climate change, is, is, 
has become nonsensical. Well, that's my point. You're living back there, and you really are in a cyclical pattern of what the weather normally average is. We are, too. We've got some snow on the ground. We've got some more snow falling. We're looking at 30 degrees. We're looking for a heavy snowfall in the mountains that we need. Why in the world do these climate change kooks think that they can play God and they can put their hand on the thermostat to make everything a situation of mediocrity and we're all going to fall in lockstep and we're going to watch agriculture, we're going to watch transportation, we're going to watch private ownership of vehicles all go by the wayside. These people are nuts. Well, they're nuts, but they're using the issue uh, because they have failed for decades to sell their true agenda, which is to bust up and and replace the capitalist system with a government-controlled, top-down system that we've seen throughout history fail miserably and actually kill people, literally. Um, it's a redistributionist agenda. Uh, they want the government masters to tell us what to drive, what you know, how to live our lives, where to live. That's really what this is about, is they know best, and they want to impose their redistribution agenda, their command and control, take over the economy. Uh, and they're using climate change as, as a, basically a, a mask, if you will, uh, to try and uh, sell it to the public. Absolutely. Tom, I'm going to put you on the spot here, and I'm not trying to paint you into a political corner, but I need to know, uh, what are your fears and trepidations leading into the 2020 elections if if Donald Trump does not win re-election and one of those liberal loons takes over the White House? Well, every single one of them has expressed support for this Green New Deal, which we've talked about as, as basically a raw deal. Every single one of them now is talking about a fracking ban, the very thing that has made the United States the number one producer of oil and ga uh, oil and, and natural gas in the world, uh, that has gotten rid of our de our dependence uh, on foreign oil, particularly from hostile regions. It has been the backbone of our economy. It has been the sort of driver of this economic well-being that we've seen, the job creation and everything else. They essentially want to stop that and reverse it. So I think a lot is at stake here, especially on this issue. Let me ask you, I'm almost out of time, but I want you to elaborate on this a little bit. I want you, on behalf of your job, sitting at your desk right now with the American Energy Alliance, you tell me and tell my listeners what we can do to stop this stupidity and this bus from going over a cliff. you got to make sure that this, your state doesn't re replicate the nonsense that's going on in, in some of your neighboring states western states like the west coast um, oregon washington california you've got to make sure that the public utility commissions don't just rubber stamp all of this green mandatory nonsense we've got to make sure that uh we support president trump and we've got to make sure that our elected officials are held accountable and make sure they fight for free energy markets absolutely we have another caller with a question or a comment good morning caller quickly you're on the air yeah, we have uh, climate change going on right now with all the uh, new volcanoes going on. What are they going to do when the climate gets colder now? You know, and that's a really good question, and I want uh, Tom to kind of elaborate on that. We are seeing, of course, the volcanoes for years and years, long before man walked the earth, uh, were a distinct change of climate and atmospheric conditions. Tom, how would you respond to that? So the, the point to that is is that if uh, if when if we've always adapted to, to the change of the climate, that is how we have progressed as human beings, right? And, and the point is this: we can adapt to the climate. We are adept to adapting to the climate. We cannot control the climate. We're not God, as you said. We're that is such hubris to think that what we can do will change this atmospheric re relationship. Uh, with naturally occurring events in the CO concentration in the air. We just don't have that level of control. So the best that we can do is use our resources and our technology to continue as we have adapting 
to the climate. You know, it uh, it absolutely sickens me, and it makes me extremely upset to think that we have some greenie, whether it's Alexandria Ocasio Cortez or any member of the Democratic Party, that wants to put their hand on the thermostat and say, "We are going to regulate that everything stay at seventy degrees and sunshine." You know, I don't want anybody playing God except the supreme being Himself, and I absolutely look at these people like they're loons. You know, the, the biggest thing here is if this were indeed the problem that they say it is, poll after survey after poll that we've done, the public doesn't support the government, doesn't believe that the government is capable of even doing a even moderately decent job of fixing it. They put their faith in the technology, the innovation, the entrepreneurs, the, the doers out there to do what they've done all through history, which is make technology, uh, you know, produce things that makes our lives better. Absolutely. And that's where it's going to come if it is indeed the problem they say it is, not from government. Absolutely. We have time for one quick call. Caller, I've only got a minute. Go real fast. Well, with this incident in Iran, they said the price of, of gas was going to go up, and it was on the national news, and I knew that the mainstream media wanted it to go up. But the, the stability of our, you know, of American energy is so stable that it never went up. And so we, you know, America is literally controlling the situation with pricing here in America and maybe elsewhere in the world. I'll hang up. Uh, respond quickly, Tom, please. It, it, I mean, your, your listeners are wise. Um, they get it. Um, in the past, that would have caused a massive spike in gasoline prices. In the past, events controlled our gasoline prices. Thanks to the revolution, the fracking um, renaissance, the, the oil and gas production in this country, we are now the price setter. We control our own destiny with respect to our energy. And, and it is a good thing. It's a stable thing for us and the world that the freest country in the world, the richest country in the world, the most powerful and most generous country in the world, is the one that is leading the way on energy production. Absolutely. Listen, I want you to do yourself a favor and go over to your favorite restaurant today and charge the, your lunch to Dan Kish because he didn't show up this morning. Yeah, listen, Dan uh, apologizes. and I'll be filling in for him for a few weeks. He's got to do some family stuff, uh, but he did mention to me that he wanted you to uh, count on me for uh, for. Uh, the next few weeks to you, uh, inform you, your listeners and have this conversation. You tell my dear friend Dan that we always wish him the best. I always give him a hard time, but whatever the issue that he's got a friend out here in Idaho, and I want to say to you, Tom Pyle, excellent job this morning, and thank you for coming on the program. Always a pleasure. Take care. Thank you, sir. Uh, Tom Pyle with the American Energy Alliance, along with my good friend Dan Kish, and I think the world of those guys, they tell it like it is, and I appreciate that. Hey, don't forget, Thursday's a big, big, big day right there at the Best Western Burley Inn and Convention Center because they're going to be having the 2020 Idaho Irrigation Equipment Show, and it's going to be this Thursday, the 16th, from 8 in the morning until 4.30 p.m. Free, no registration, and they're going to have a whole bunch of irrigation equipment manufacturers, dealers, and distributors of landscape and ag irrigation products are going to be there. There's going to be a lot of really, really interesting educational classes. All of this at the Best Western Burley and Convention Center this Thursday, starting at 8 in the morning, the 2020 Idaho Irrigation Equipment Show. Don't you miss it. Okay. By the by, I also want to remind you that you need to get outside. You need to get out and enjoy the great Idaho outdoors and maybe uh, go up in the hills on a snowmobile or a snow bike. Well, where do you go to get that, Bunky? Well, I'll tell you at Let's Ride, 270 Highway 24 between Rupert and the World. My, 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 they're open Monday through Friday, 9 to 6, Saturdays 9 to 4. Believe me. 
when I say they've got a showroom full of fun. Absolutely. They're open Monday through Friday, 9 to 6, Saturdays, 9 to 4. And these people, along with all the snowmobiles and snow bikes, they've got all the accessories. They've got a phenomenal service department to keep you running. Let's ride. Don't forget 270 Highway 24 between Rupert and the World. And it's really, really the truth. That's where the fun is sold at Let's Ride. While you're over in that neck of the woods, too, don't forget our friends at Cameron and Siemens Insurance, Highway 24 in Rupert. Oh, my. Todd and the crew are always there to serve you, very dedicated and responsive to your needs. Life insurance, health insurance, retirement planning, employee benefits, all of this and a whole bunch more. You better call. Make an appointment. Make sure you're covered. 436-4424. That number again, 436-4424. The best serving you, Cameron. Run and Siemens Insurance Highway 24 in Rupert. You be sure and get a hold of them today. I want to say this before I introduce my next guest. I consider this man to be a very dear friend to me and this program. And I consider it a God's blessing that he is back on the radio. He has written another new book that I just absolutely can't wait to read. And to me, this is a joy and a blessing to have him back this morning. And I say good morning to Dr. Gerard Lamero. Sir, how are you? I am doing fantastic. Uh, thank you for your prayers. Uh, as the audience may know, I was a little bit under the weather for a while. Uh, doc, uh, doc- Dr. Lamero, you're being uh, a little bit minimal. You were really under the weather, and my wife and I were extremely worried about you, your health, and I just can't tell you how nice it is to hear your voice on the other end of the line. Well, it's great to hear yours, too. You're a wonderful American. You run a terrific radio show, and you live in a fantastic state to boot. Well, I appreciate that, sir. I cannot wait to find out about your new book, Real World Socialism, Spiritual, Moral, and Economic Bankruptcy, Sold by Using False Hopes and Deceit. My goodness, give us a little background on the book. Well, you know, uh, my thing is forecast models and forecasting what's going to happen. And a while back, quite a while back, I realized the number one issue in the 2020 presidential election is going to be socialism. Uh, There's a lot of different trends that are going on, and socialism, just as I predicted, uh, is, is the top issue. Uh, we fer- learned this week that Bernie Sanders is probably moving into the front-runner status of the Democratic Party, uh, meaning he might likely be the presidential candidate, and he's an avowed socialist. He sometimes calls himself a Democrat socialist, but he's been a socialist for years. And yesterday we have the news story that President Trump's campaign has decided Bernie Sanders is the front-runner in the Democratic Party, and they're going to focus on, on campaigning against him. And also, they, they signaled earlier they would campaign against socialism. That was uh, a little while back. The President of the United States, Donald Trump, has said America will never become a socialist country. He's going to fight to keep us free. And, and I'm talking about fighting in a debate, because there are a lot of debates going on and will go on this year. And it's all about socialism. So I decided I'm going to write a book on socialism to let people know what this thing is. That's the whole crux of the problem, Dr. Lamero. I don't think that even a small percentage, a small percentage of people really understand socialism and its evils. Uh, I put the onus on the American public because in our education system, we're not teaching what's right. We're not teaching about the greatness of this country. We're not teaching about capitalism. We're not teaching about our Constitution. And so socialism is making a creep into our society. Am I wrong? No, you're 100% correct. Uh, It turns out that uh, an awful lot of the professors in colleges and universities have decided to be Marxist, and Marxism is another word that means socialism. And they've decided that uh, this utopian philosophy that has never worked in the world is, is what they want. 
And it, it turns out that they've educated many of the teachers that go on to teach K through 12, our younger children. And, and they're getting inundated, indoctrinated with these ideas that socialism is this wonderful thing. You know, you can give people free lunches and you can give them free medical care. You can, they are even talking about giving them free income even if they don't want to work. So how's anything going to get done in this country? Well, I'll tell you what. I decided to write all about socialism. There's all sorts of variations of socialism. There's what they call Democrat Socialism, National Socialism, uh, you name it. There's a, a Scandinavian Socialism. There are all sorts of variations, but you know what? I studied them in depth. I've got a fantastic library all about socialism and also about capitalism and freedom. And I put together a great book that covers all these variations and how they're a little bit different and how they how they all work and what they have in common and what they have in common is is really what you just said evil these people started out as anti-jewish anti-christian they started out as anti-family anti-marriage anti-life they're the ones who are pro-abortion and they're they're just anti-everything it seems like that's good and this is a really bad bad ideology and there are literally millions of people who have been tortured starved to death or died in the 20th century alone and it goes back a little further than that it goes back about 300 years so there are all sorts of millions of people that have been damaged by this philosophy and unfortunately we've got people teaching it in our college and universities like it's some sort of idealistic wonderful thing where everybody's going to get taken care of everybody's going to get everything for free and guess what they go bankrupt in a hurry Dr. Lomero, it amazes me, and I'm not being facetious, it amazes me as to how short-sighted our society is or how uneducated our society is. I don't care if you want to start in Venezuela. I don't care where you want to go around the world with failed socialistic values and ideas and governments. Why can't people see what's happened and say, uh-uh, not here? But no, they seem to be embracing it. Well, they've got the media on their side. The media, a lot of them are leftists, and they've got the, the school system. Uh, let's face it, they're Marxists in the university and socialists, and, and they're also in K through 12. You could, that's a, those are big lobby groups, you know. There are a lot of people there. You also have all the people in big government that want to make it bigger and bigger and stronger and more totalitarian. Let me give your listeners one example of how this works. And I'm going to take Venezuela. Hugo Chavez ran for office a few years back in Venezuela, and he told everybody he was a Democrat socialist. Have you heard that any time mm -hmm. soon? Yes. Yeah, he said that. Or he was a Democrat socialist, and he would give them everything. They would get everything. They'd have medical care. They'd have everything imaginable, and the government would take care of them, and they bought into it. They were, unfortunately, uneducated on socialism. And what did, they, what did he do? He, he got into office. They haven't had a free election since that time. He got in once. They haven't had a free election since that time. He became an outright socialist. He was a socialist. I think he just hit it. And he then became a totalitarian dictator. He took over industry after industry after industry. He ran them all into bankruptcy. And what do we have? We have the people are starving in Venezuela. It used to be the number one economy in South America because of its rich oil resources. He drove them into bankruptcy. And there was one university study done on the Venezuelan people, and that university study said that in one year, the Venezuelan people on average lost 24 pounds because they were starving to death. That is criminal. And they don't have medicine, they don't have anything. They don't have any of the basics. The economy is absolutely shot. It's another poverty-stricken company, country like North Korea, like Cuba, and like so many other failed communist, socialist experiments. And by the way, communists, back in Karl Marx's day, he's the one who first started talking about it, and socialism. Communism and socialism were the same thing. He thought they were synonyms. 
If you said socialism, you meant communism. If you said communism, you meant socialism. So these people who are bragging about being socialists, a lot of them are actually communists, I think. You know, Dr. Lomero, I mean, the bottom line is, and you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure out and ask these questions, but when they start talking about free college, free medical and health care for everyone, uh, where do they think the money's going to come from? Well, they're going to have to borrow it from China because we don't have the money. <laughs> we don't have the ability to get free. If you tax everybody, not at 50% or even 70% like AOC, that, that lady Ocasio-Cortez wants to do, you, if, you type, uh, if you tax every American at 100%, they're going to run out of all the money there is in a year. So you'll be bankrupt in a year. You can give away free things for the first year, and then after that, everybody's in poverty because you've taken all the money away. And remember, wealth is only created in the private sector. If you take all the money out of the private sector, the government can't produce a nickel. All it does is tax you. And when it's finished taxing you, there's nothing left. So where are we, in your opinion, today? I mean, when you wrote this book, it's a daily change uh, with economic conditions and people's philosophy and thought. But where are we today here in this United States from your standpoint? Well, from my standpoint, there, there are a hardcore uh, group of socialists and communists that want to change this country. They want to fundamentally tra transform it. And by the way, one of the things in this book that people may be surprised at is one of my chapters explains what I think would be the strategy socialists would use to change this country. And I think they should read the book just so they're aware of that possible strategy that might happen to us. And I, I think that's important. I think there's maybe 10% of the population that thinks that way. I think a lot of other people just don't think because they don't know what they're up against. They, they aren't old enough to have lived through the Great Famine in the middle of the, the 20th century that was caused by socialism. There are millions of people who died in famines, believe it or not. The two biggest famines during the, the world history occurred under socialism. Mm -hmm. and, and that tells you how terrible a thing it is when it kills millions of people for lack of food, and it's probably doing that in Venezuela or starting to do that. So I think there are those people that are just plain ignorant, and I think it's up to the rest of us in America who, who have our eyes wide open, like you and hopefully uh, others, you know, to let people know what they're up against, because they're not learning in the colleges, they're not learning in the universities, except for a few good schools around the country, and they're not learning it in K through 12. And I think it's up to people that understand what's going on to warn them, uh, you know, Paul Revere, you know, who let the people know the British were coming. Well, people in this book are letting people know socialism is trying to make its head, its ugly head, come out in America. Yeah. You know, one of the things that I really get upset about, and I'd like you to comment on this, is our lack of ability from our own news media. They're not journalists. They're all bought and paid for by the left, in my opinion, with the exception of very few. And the media, why aren't they asking questions of Elizabeth Warren? Oh, well, if you're in favor of this, where is the money coming from? And in Bernie's case, the same situation. You're an avowed socialist, but where's all the money going to come to pay for all these governmental programs? Nobody in the media has any backbone or simply put guts to put these people on the spot. Well, you know why they don't have any guts or backbone? They don't, they don't want freedom. They're on the other side. These people believe in socialism. They got indoctrinated. And a lot of people who were interested in government got it in this idea in their head that they're smart. They're smarter than the average person. They're smarter than the deplorables. You know, they call people deplorables. And therefore, they can run this country better than a free market and freedom people living in freedom. I don't think the news media is stupid. I don't think that the news media are, you know, not asking the right questions because they don't know about them. I think they know about them, but they want this country to change into a socialist country. We have another caller with a question or comment. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Go ahead, please. Well, whether or not you're talking about Iran before 79 and what a People used to go vacation there. 
you wouldn't go there. You wouldn't ever want to go there now. And Venezuela was a place that people wanted to go see and go to. And this is what socialism does. It's communism bailed. But this is what capitalism does. In this very valley, the magic valley of Idaho, the most, the uh, yield of 211 bushel of an acre of wheat, 211 bushel of acre of wheat is set a record that's in history. And this was what capitalism gives you. The American farmer feeds the world. And uh, this shows you what an amazing thing can happen when you turn people free. I'll hang up. Uh, respond to the caller, please. 100%. You're 100% correct. Capitalism wins on all, all, all scores. Uh, any argument, capitalism beats socialism and communism. And my book, by the way, I think is in one place the best set of arguments to fight against socialism when you have to debate people because it gives you all their arguments and tells you why their arguments are full of baloney and it goes through all the, the good arguments for capitalism, free markets, and freedom and does a great job of giving you all the tools in one place. And by the way, if you have a, a son or a daughter that's going to college and being indoctrinated by uh, these socialist professors, send them one of these books so that they can hold their head up and, and defend America. Absolutely. Dr. Lamero, we are in the middle right now of a great big political uh, fray, if you will, as the Democrats are trying to pick somebody to run against Donald Trump for the presidential election in 2020. Uh, my fears are that with the impeachment process and all the throwing of dirty laundry on the President Trump campaign from the Democrats, it may hurt him at the polling stations in November. What what are your thoughts? Just the opposite, Zeb. Uh, I will tell you that the uh, his base is fired up. I went to a recent meeting uh, that you might normally get only 10 uh, local people uh, to help Trump run. Uh, and, and these people, instead of getting 10 people, got maybe 100. And they were all fired up. They were all ready to work night and day to get him reelected. And what I see is that people are actually upset. A lot of people leaving the Democratic Party. Some people stay in the Democratic Party, but they plan to vote for Trump. No, I, I think that these people have overplayed their hand. They are so out of touch. Socialism is so out of touch with people that are freedom-loving Americans that the voters are turning away from the Democrats. President Trump, in my view, is going to easily win re-election. He's going to pick up states that nobody would have guessed possible uh, even a year ago. Let me ask you this question then. I remember vividly on my program, uh, you are of course very, very adept at being, I think, the number one political analyst in America and your prognostications all came true uh, politically, but let me ask you this. Do you think that there will be, if Trump is reelected, and I think he will be also, a complete fragmentation and uh, dividing of the Democratic Party and someone like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez will start a new party. Do you think that's possible? Uh, well, actually, I predicted it in 2015 that it would be happening. And about a year ago, I said the actual date will probably be in the spring of 2021 after they lose the House, lose the Senate, and lose the White House once again. I think the Democratic Party is over uh, next year. And uh, I've been saying it, as I said, since 2015. And, you know, the Whig Party was real, real successful back in the 1800s. But you don't hear about Whigs anymore. And uh, I think the Democratic Party, there's nothing that says they have to stay around. And when they get so far out of touch with the electorate, they're going to just go out of business. I think there will be a new second party. I don't think it'll be AOC that starts it. I think more likely it's going to be started by somebody like a Mitt Romney. Really? Somebody who's a, a, a Republican that uh, is more of a liberal Republican and sort of a Democrat light. So I'm more inclined to think that. I think AOC and Bernie Sanders, they're all going to join the Socialist Party. Uh, there is a Socialist Party already, but it's like a, you know, they don't get many votes for anything. And I think that'll continue to happen. They won't get a whole lot of votes. You know, Dr. Lamero... 
Dr. Lomero, I'm almost out of time, but I want you to elaborate on one other point. I'm very, very concerned about our educational facilities across the United States, what we're teaching these kids in kindergarten all the way through the university system, a very biased, very left-wing uh, support, if you will, of all the socialistic ideas. How do we possibly going up, go about changing this? It's up to American people. Uh, if we do nothing, the socialists will, will keep having their day, so to speak, in the universities and K through 12. We have to join the school boards. It's happened in some places around the country where the conservatives have joined the school boards and turned things around. One school district I can think of, they are now teaching the Constitution. Why? Because the people got themselves elected to the school board and said, we want American principles taught. Same thing with the colleges and universities. A lot of us are alumni. I went to college. And you don't have to donate and, and just let them take your money and do whatever they want. You can have an active voice. You can tell them what you want. You can tell them what's good for this country. And you know what? They'll get the message if enough people do it and enough people need to do it. And we can't sit home and not do anything. We have to be active to keep our country free, because freedom is not free. We had to fight for it, and we have to continue to, to basically debate and, and explain to people why we have the best system that was ever created in the world. Absolutely. You know, the vibrancy and the, uh, the urgency in your voice is so appealing because it's so great to have you back on the program. I'm talking to Dr. Gerard Lomero and his new book, Real World Socialism, Spiritual, Moral, and Economic Bankruptcy, sold by using false hopes and deceit. Dr. Lomero, where can my audience find this book? It's, it's available on Amazon right now. It's in a print edition. You can buy the print if you like books. And if you like Kindle, it's on Kindle. And you can go to bookstores because it's in books and print, and you can order it. But most bookstores uh, don't carry it because it's brand new, and they haven't had a demand for it. You know, bookstores don't carry many books compared to how many Amazon carries. Right. So Amazon's got it today, and they just got Kindle uh, earlier today. So uh, it's there. Have fun with it. it oh. It's a great book, and you know what? I think it's the best book to defeat co uh, socialism ever written. I cannot wait to read it, and also I cannot wait to have you back on the program. I mean this when I say it. God bless you, Dr. Gerard Lomero. You are a dear friend of this program. Please come back soon. I will be happy to just call me anytime. And God bless you and also your wonderful, wonderful listeners. All right, sir. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the book is called Real World Socialism, and it's written by a friend of mine that really knows and understands politics in this country, and that's Dr. Gerard Lomero. Thank you for being on the show this morning. Right now, it is time for the weather forecast, and the weather brought to you by some more good friends of ours, and that's, of course, Phillips Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and Company. They've been been providing accounting services to the Minicash area for well over 50 years. I urge you to call them and let them help you and your family and your business with the very best of tax return preparation, tax planning, business consulting, retirement planning, and so much more. They really care, and they are the professionals. With offices in Burley and Rupert, Phillips, Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and Company. And right now, here's Gina with the weather. If you don't have to be out on the roadway for today, I would highly suggest you just stay put. Here's a look at your weather forecast. We are expecting more snow. Total daytime accumulations of one to three inches. Factor in that wind, we definitely have some drifting snow, especially out in the counties. We are expecting a high of about 33 for today. Tonight, so snow showers are going to be tapering off just a little bit. We are expecting another inch of snow for this evening. We are expecting a low right around 15 for tomorrow. A day of reprieve, partly sunny skies, high of 30. Still going to be breezy for Wednesday night. Mostly cloudy skies, low of 22. Thursday, mostly cloudy, high of 38. And back to snow showers for Thursday night with a low of 26. 
Stop look at your weather for us, Debbie Appreciate it, Gina, and brought to everybody by Phillips Oaks, Goodwin Crane, and Company. If you have questions, they've got the answers. Please let them serve you. Phillips Oaks, Goodwin Crane, and Company at 1710 Overland in Burley and 625th Street in Rupert. They are the professionals helping you, your family, and your business. Uh, coming up in a few minutes, we're going to have our dear friend, Dr. History. I believe he just kind of ambled in here, and we'll have him in the studio momentarily. want to remind you, too, about the 2020 Idaho Irrigation Equipment Show. Oh, my, this is a biggie, a biggie, at the Best Western Burley Inn and Convention Center this Thursday. Mm-hmm. This week on the 16th from 8 in the morning until 4.30 in the afternoon. It's free, no registration, but man, oh man, they're going to have over 50 irrigation companies, equipment manufacturers, dealers, distributors of landscape and ag irrigation products, along with some of the most interesting and informative classes on irrigation. And I urge you to be there this Thursday at the 2020 Idaho Irrigation Equipment Show at the Burley Best Western Star. Starting at 8 a.m. Uh, let's see what else have I got. Oh, I want to remind you, too, about something that I really, really believe in, and that's creating your own kind of a security blanket financially. Mm-hmm. And I and Deanne both uh, went to a meeting not too long ago and learned about 7K metals and silver purchases. Silver has been going up, 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 and it's a great way to build your financial security and future. And you can literally create your own security bank through silver purchases that come right to your home. It's a great saving opportunity and a valued treasure for your loved ones in the future. Don't forget to find out more about this. In investing in financial security, contact Lon Hardy at 312-8699 or Sharon Wilmot at 430-3259. Tell them I told you to call. You betcha they'll take care of you at 7K Metals. Right now, we're going to get all set to go to the news. And coming up after that, We have Dr. History coming into the studio, and then at 10.30, attorney and political analyst James Herson is going to be talking about Holly Weird. It is weird over there in uh, left-leaning land, Uh, talking about all the complete idiocy that's going on in Hollywood, Uh, there being a major part of the liberal left. We're going to talk to him about that at 10.30. Right now, news next from CBS. We'll have our up-to-the-date man out in the weather forecast in just a moment. Dr. History just mushed his huskies up to my back porch. We'll have that in just a moment. But right now, I want to thank our Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations, for all they do to provide you the best and safest of tires. You stop in and see them today. Along with our friends at Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley, helping you. You get back to being you. And our friends at Greystone Crossing Senior Living. Wow, what a beautiful place. We took the tour like a lot of folks did uh, last fall. And uh, Kelly and Matt Wiggins invited everybody to see the beautiful brand new 12-bedroom home and all the furnishings. And they get three meals a day to their people that live there, housekeeping, local transportation. It is really sweet something else you better call seniors if you'd like to take a look call them at 650-4979 that number again 650-4979 and that's graystone crossing senior living at 1221 21st street in hayburn seniors living the good life with their friends uh, real quick, too, I want to remind you again about that Idaho Irrigation Show. Oh, boy, it's going to be a ripping good show. And it's this Thursday at the Burley Convention Center. Don't forget, Best Western Inn Convention Center. And it's going to be a lot of fun and a lot of knowledge right there. 2020 Idaho Irrigation Equipment Show this Thursday, starting at 8 o'clock, going till 4.30. All kinds of interesting, interesting educational classes and all the latest of equipment equipment 
2020 Idaho Irrigation Equipment Show. Don't you miss it at the Burley Best Western Inn and Convention Center. Well, look who's here as we have the trumpets standing in the background with, ready to give him a fanfare, Dr. History. Good morning, Zeb. How are you? I'm good, good. A little cold out there, a little bit of snow, a little bit of wind, but hey, it's Idaho. How was the weather uh, on the way over? Oh, it's not bad. You know, I mean, when you live here, you get kind of used to being able to drive on a little snow. Sure. So it's okay. And occasionally, you know, a little trip to the barrel pit never hurt anybody. <laughs> well, I've I've been there, too. <laughs> yeah, me, too. Uh, what are we going to talk about? Well, uh, let's go to 1855 okay. to California, and we're going to start off. We're going to talk about a guy by the name of Rattlesnake Dick. Okay. Okay. All right. So here we go. So How, where did they come up with some of these I, nicknames? I don't know. Well, actually, this we may get to that. Okay. We, we'll see. All right. So San Francisco in 1855 uh, was one of the wickedest cities in the world. It was steadily growing worse. It had become the mecca for thieves and murderers from every country on earth. Gee, how some things never change. <laughs> with many of the courts, the city government, and the police department controlled by thugs. No honest man dared walk the streets unarmed by the street spring of 1856, the crime in the city had become so bad that the honest citizens banded together and formed the famous Vigilance Committee. Vigilante? Yeah. The, oh. They call it Vigilance really? Committee. Yeah. Oh. Uh, and I've heard that term before, too. But anyway, the criminals were rapidly rounded up and tried for their crimes. The worst of them were hanged. Many of them were sent to prison. Thousands of them were driven from the city by fear of punishment. So there were a lot of bad guys there. Who were the... So called judges and jury the, uh, the vigilante committee the really? vigilance committee they the, yeah now unfortunately for Wells Fargo a lot of the most desperate criminals were driven into the mountains where there was little or no law but a lot of Wells Fargo stagecoaches carrying obviously treasure boxes with gold uh, because that's what was going on in California now the stage holdups had uh, been no novelty in California but up until the uh, vigilance committee drove the big-time criminals out of San Francisco Francisco, most of the holdups were small, carried out by maybe a single robber. Uh, the one exception had been the short-lived Real Foot Williams gang. Okay, Real Foot. I'm going to talk about him in a little bit. So in 1852, Real Foot had organized a gang of young tough guys, and the smartest among them was a guy by the name of Rattlesnake Dick. Well, they held up the Nevada City stagecoach, robbed it of the express box containing about $7,500, and took off toward the mountains. Well, the sheriff of Yuba County promptly swore in a posse. They picked up the trail of the bandits. They ran them down. Three of the gang were killed. Others were captured and jailed. But Real Foot and Rattlesnake Dick escaped. Okay, so they made it. They went to San Francisco, and they kind of disappeared for a while. Mm -hmm. All right? Now... Rattlesnake Dick, his real name is Dick Barter, and he was born in Quebec, uh, the son of a British Army, Army officer. At 17 years of age, he ran away from home, joined the California Gold Rush. He was kind of a tall, handsome, smart guy, kind of like you and I, Zeb. Uh, yeah. Crack shot, <laughs> crack shot with either a pistol or a rifle. Okay. That still leaves me out. <laughs> well, me too, really. And for a short time, he's prospected unsuccessfully at a place called Rattlesnake Bar. And I think that's where he oh, picked up the name Rattlesnake I see, Dick. I see. But then he fell in with a crowd of rough uh, young miners. He became their leader and was given, like I said, the name Rattlesnake Dick. He had been leader of a rough crowd long before he was arrested for horse stealing and was convicted and sent to the penitentiary. Well, soon after, it was discovered that he was not guilty of being a horse thief, so he was released and went to a place called in Shasta, California, which is up you know, north. Yeah, I've been there. Northern California. Yep. Uh, to make a fresh start. But the name of Rattlesnake Dick the Horse Thief kind of followed him, his reputation. And honest people wouldn't have anything to do with this guy because because of that. So, unable, unable to make a living, Dick decided to earn the reputation for thievery that had been unjustly given to him. And it was soon after that that he joined Real Foot's gang. Okay, so now they're together. Did you ever wonder back in the old days, uh, employment for jobs wasn't anywhere what it is today? They didn't have many options. They didn't. They didn't really. There was not a lot of things to do. And if you weren't a cowboy, that limited you, you know, unless you wanted to be a miner or something like that. Yeah. 
but the, the speed with which Real Foot's gang was run down and broken up taught these guys a lesson they did not soon forget. So gang robbery was too dangerous. It was a lot easier to follow a posse, or for a follow, posse to follow the trail of a gang than a single man. So then, too, if a member of the gang were caught, it was always the danger that he would sing, you yeah. know, to save his neck and give away the name of everybody else in yeah, the gang. really. So on the other hand, it was reasonably safe for a highwayman to make a stick up alone. There were thousands of places along the mountain roads where he could lie in hiding until the stagecoach pulled slowly up like a steep, narrow spot in the road where he was slowed down. Uh, there was no chance for the driver to whip his team into a dash for safety, and regardless of how brave and watchful a guard might be, he was always at a disadvantage. Now picture this, Zeb. He's up on a high seat beside the driver, a perfect target for a bandit. Mm-hmm. Uh, so... He really has no way to hide. That's He's right. sitting up there. So often his first warning of holdup was the sight of a double barrel shotgun aimed at his head. And beyond this, there was usually passengers in the stagecoach, and the high women knew that guards were instructed to give up their treasure boxes before endangering the lives of their passengers. So that was the priority. Don't endanger the passengers. You know, you were talking about the strong box on right. the stages. Uh-huh. The other night I was watching an old, old, it was made in 1939, Western movie, black and white, okay. uh, barely a talkie, and they were the most original. They threw down the strong box, and it was exactly the small size that you were talking that we described. about. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, there was no need for more than one man uh, in pulling up a holdup until uh, Wells Fargo established his detective force. Now, the robber's risk of being killed or caught was, you know, kind of slight, but often the highwayman himself was never seen by those he robbed. With only his gun barrel showing through a clump of uh, brush or chaparral, he would shout, like we've always said, throw down the box. Yeah. Nine times out of ten, it was thrown down, and soon, uh, as it struck the ground, the robber shouted f- to drive on. You know, get it going. And the driver had no choice but to do as he was told, and he took uh, it took a brave guard to climb down and go back to fight out alone with the bandit. So as long as he was alive, he was just going to keep it going. So well hidden in the brush, the high women had been known to follow for a mile or more a stagecoach that he had robbed and uh, take a shot at the guard uh, if they started to stop and leave his seat. Uh, and that kind of encouraged him to, uh, maybe we'll just head on, a, a, yeah. you know, to the next stop. Yeah. So with the treasure box in the road and the stagecoach uh, driven beyond rifle range, the robber's task was easy. He had only to smash the lock off the box, lift out the gold pouches, and slip into the chaparral. If he was careful about leaving tracks, he could not be trailed. And if he were smart enough to keep from getting drunk and doing a little bragging, he could soon be spending his money freely. I got a dumb question for you. Why weren't there more stories, perhaps, about the passengers inside the coach that might have had revolvers or rifles just unloading on one bandit? You know, I thought about that, but I also thought if they did that, uh, you know, there's chances that the that uh, robber would shoot right into the t- stagecoach. And I think they just thought, uh, you know, okay, give them the money and let's get get on our way. That's the only thing I can think of. Yeah. So, and that, there probably were a few occasions when the passengers did did uh, stick up for themselves, basically. Anyway, uh, so the robber had only to disappear for a few days, then show up in some mining town with a tall tale of having struck a rich sandbar, and gold dust was gold dust, and stolen dust looked just like the same as any that you might have got out of a stream. And often the highwayman deposited the gold in a Wells Fargo bank, the bank, very bank he just robbed, <laughs> or the state company he just he robbed. He went right back and put the money in the well, same bank? probably after a while. Oh, yeah, my. Yeah, he, he would have waited a while, you know. But anyway, following the breakup of Real Foot's gang, Rattlesnake Dick remained in San Francisco for about three years. He just kind of stayed hidden. And for a short while, he held up stage coaches alone. But he was a natural leader of men and was soon the head of the first successful gang in the West. Now, Dick's first big strike and the one that brought him fame was $80,000 robbery of a Wells Fargo mule train. Now, you've heard of Robin stagecoaches, yeah. but this is a mule train. I'm going to describe that. Now, the messenger and the guard chosen by Wells Fargo to take this large shipment from the mountains, this $80,000 uh, of gold, uh, to Shasta City. These were brave and well-experienced. 
They knew the manner in which lone high women made their holdups, and they were careful to guide against it. Now, to move such a big shipment by stagecoach, even though there were no passengers to be protected, would be too risky. So, it was decided it would be safer to move it by mule train. All right? The gold dust, weighing a little over about 300 pounds, could be divided between two mules, but they would take eight or ten mules in this uh, mule train. And with the messenger at the front, the guard of the mule train, and the other guard at the rear, a high woman would have little chance of getting the gold. Really? Now... An extra precaution, uh, as an extra precaution, the messenger chose mules that knew the trail well and were from a corral in Shasta City. All right. Now, to ensure secrecy, they were saddled before dawn in a corral guarded by well-trusted Wells Fargo men. Each pack saddle was exactly alike, and to keep the weights equal, the gold was placed in the center of two packs, sand in the center of the others. So if you got this, you got ten mules, but only two of them are par- carrying the, the gold. Okay. Then the train of mules was put onto the trail without halters or bridles. They weren't being led. Oh, now, they weren't? No. Now, this would make them difficult to catch, and if they were stampeded, they'd run straight back to their home corral, carrying the gold with them. So there, there was some real thought behind this. So the string of sweating mules plodded slowly up a steep trail, and suddenly a deep voice from the brush yelled, Hold up! And both the guard and messenger swung in the direction from the sound had come, and instantly each was challenged from behind. Uh, the bandits leaped into the trail, shouting and stampeding the mules. The mules returned to their home corral, but the gold was gone from the packs. So somehow they managed to catch the mules, get the ones that had the gold, and they were able to get the gold. No kidding. So Sounds like an inside job. <laughs> who knows? Well, Wells Fargo rushed its best detectives to the scene of the robbery, but they couldn't find a single footprint uh, that led away from the spot, and the high woman had just disappeared. So now it's 1856. Uh, there's another express that was robbed of 26000 by a gang. It'd been, And they figured it had been pulled by, they, they started calling them the Mule Train Gang. And again, no trail was left behind. So Wells Fargo would not quit. It said every agent uh, watch in the mail for any suspicious looking letter or an unusual deposit of gold dust. So they were they were watching, you know. Now a clue was picked up from an intercepted letter and it was traced to a hideout. A posse was gathered, the hideout surrounded, and a battle was fought. Rattlesnake Dick and three members of his gang were captured. Okay. Now, Rattlesnake Dick escaped from jail, reached San Francisco, and disappeared. Again. Again. Oh, Big boy. city. Now, Dick himself was never a rowdy, and it is doubtful that he himself actually took part in all of these holdups that his organization pulled off. So, he was kind of the main guy, but he would uh, figure out how to do things, then send them out. Okay. So, that's not a bad way to, to run a business, right? So Dick actually was not only handsome, brilliant, and exceedingly quick in action, but possessed a remarkable personal magnetism. He always dressed and spoke like a gentleman. He had hundreds of friends, and, you know, given the amount of money he had, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But it's claimed that there were more than 50 members of Rattlesnake Dick's gangs. So Yeah, so he would have these groups go out, and he would organize them, and maybe send three or four here, and five or six there to do different things. And he actually set up a system of signals and passwords so that, you know, they knew who were gang members and who weren't. So for three years, the war of wits between Rattlesnake Dick and Wells Fargo went through central California and up into northern California. But he would send a gang of his men to stage a mock gun battle in town. While the sheriff and his deputies ran to stop the battle, Dick's gang would pounce upon the bank. Uh, now, that's kind of a smart diversion, don't you think? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, the sheriff's down at the other end of town, and we're going to rob the bank that's the other end. So, it's known that the gold from some of the biggest holdups was actually buried. So, he buried gold that probably is scattered throughout central and northern California. Still? Yeah. Yeah. Because these guys would get killed off or not oh, make it back. My. But no one knows how many holdups were made by Rattlesnake Dick and his gang. There was probably more than... Uh, or maybe some of the he was attributed to that he didn't do. Yeah. Now, although he and his gang had got away with more than $100,000 that had never been recovered, Wells Fargo was tightening the loop around them. 
Now, Rattlesnake Dick, as I mentioned how he dressed, he was kind of a proud guy, all right? And he still had confidence in his own ability to outwit or outshoot any sheriff or Wells Fargo man in California. So picture this. It's 8 o'clock in the, uh, in the evening, July 11th, 1859. He rode through the main street of Auburn, California with a member of his gang. Okay, 8 o'clock in the evening. There were posters offering rewards for both of them dead or alive, and these were tacked to buildings all around town on the street that he's nonchalantly riding down with his buddy. Hmm. So they made no attempt to disguise themselves, and they didn't hurry. Dick was carefully dressed, as always. His whole manner was to dare anyone uh, who wanted trouble. So this guy by the name of George Martin, he was the exception. He rounded up two deputy sheriffs, a guy named Johnson and another guy named Crutcher. They saddled their horses. By now, uh, Rattlesnake and his buddy are out of town. All right. Okay. So he rounds up these two uh, posse guys, and they uh, gallop out of town on the road taken by Dick and his partner. About two miles out, they saw the two riders just jogging along in the moonlight. Now, Johnson, who was riding in front of Martin and Crutcher, shouted, Halt! Hands up! Now, Rattlesnake Dick turned in his saddle. He called back, What's wanted? But he didn't wait for an answer. The words were barely out of his mouth before there was a flash from his pistol. Uh, uh, and in the semi-darkness, this was kind of an amazing shot, the bullet cut Johnson's bridle reins in two and shattered his left hand. Wow. All right. At almost the same moment, there was a second shot, and Martin, the other posse guy, was shot out of the saddle stone dead. Wow. Now, Johnson and Crutcher fought back, shooting as best they could in the moonlight, but without reins, Johnson couldn't control his horse that was jumping and jumping around. He had a problem. He had a problem. And when the other guy's gun was empty, they had to quit the fight, yeah. obviously. Now, Rattlesnake Dick and his uh, man had ridden on as though nothing had happened. They just kept on a moseying down the trail. This was the last exhibition of Dick's pride and courage. Early the next morning, his body was found at the roadside more than a mile from the scene of the fight. Two bullets had passed completely through his body, and both of them had struck vital organs. And it's pretty much unbelievable that any man could have ridden so far after receiving two bullet wounds, either one of which should have been fatal. But Rattlesnake Dick had been kind of an unbelievable man from the time he was 17. And again, kind of a proud uh, leader, uh, uh, and I think pretty smart for the most part, <laughs> except riding right through the middle of a town where his posters uh, describing him, uh, you know. Let me ask you a question about that. Now, I know that the Old West had a lot of wanted posters, wanted, dead or alive, and then the name. But... How did they tell who was who? That is a great question because, you know, they didn't have cam. Well, they did have cameras, but in order to have a, a, a picture of the guy, it had to be just taken from people who saw him yeah. or knew who he was. And these artists' conceptions as to what they look like, they used on wanted posters before cameras. Yeah. And certainly they couldn't have been very accurate. That's true. And there probably was a few guys that were hung uh, <laughs> uh, as, uh, you know, uh, yeah, they, they weren't the right guy, but uh, they may have been shot and killed. You and, know, you were talking about shooting until they ran out of ammunition. Yeah. The other night I was watching the movie The Sons of Katie Elder okay. with John Wayne. Yeah. At the end of the movie, when John Wayne's going after the guy, the bad guy inside of the, a building, count how many <laughs> shots John Wayne gets out of his six shooter. <laughs> yeah, you get about fifteen or twenty. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, you know, he probably had a spare gun somewhere, right? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> so that's the story of Rattlesnake Dick. Uh, I'd never heard of him. Yeah, Curse of the Wells Fargo Company, and one of the smarter bandits, really, I think, yeah. you know, and he knew enough to go into San Francisco and just kind of stay hidden for, you know, three years at a time before he resumed his occupation. But most all of them met their demise. They did. Most of them, at one time or another, they uh, ended up at uh, six feet under or, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. So, and the vigilante committee, they didn't care. You know, uh, I know we've got just, what, a minute left. Yeah. Uh, not very far from here, up uh, towards the Sun Valley area, there was a vigilante committee that uh, caught a guy 
red-handed. Uh, I can't remember if it was a horse thief or something, but they were going to hang him. But there weren't any trees over there. So they brought two wagons together, and they put the, the uh, tongues of the wagon up in the air, tied them together, and then tied the wagon so they wouldn't slide apart, and they hoisted the guy up by the tongue of the tongues of the wagon tied together wow. and they took care of business very efficiently. You know, do you ever watch the movie uh, uh Lonesome Dove? Yeah. I think the hanging scene in that movie is probably the most realistic and gruesome. Yeah. Well, to me, the most gruesome one was when they uh, hung uh, Black Jack Ketchum, yeah. and they had the rope a little too long, and when he hit the end of the rope, his head popped off. Well, yeah, <laughs> that, was, that would be very disconcerting, that I understand. Would be. I appreciate you coming by on a... Well, right now, it doesn't look too bad outside, does no, it? No, it, it'll be okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, nice day. Dr. History is always welcome on this program. We really appreciate everything he does, and uh, he'll be you, you'll be here next week. Yep, I'll be here. We'll look forward to a Dr. History, and I'll talk with him in just a moment. First of all, I want to remind everybody about Lee's Furniture Floors and more. Their great, big, huge January flooring event. Oh, my goodness. The carpet for your home, three distinct prices, $69, $89, or $99 for the premium carpet, and and don't forget, to all the luxury vinyl for your home. My goodness, that also in various prices. So you better check it out today for the beautification and comfortization of your home. All of this from Lee's Furniture Floors and more. 459 Overland in Burley. Jeff and the crew are waiting to serve you at Lee's Furniture Floors and more. We're going to send it over to our main studio. I'll be back in about three minutes. Don't go away. And now, back to Zeb at the Ranch on AM 1230 KBAR. To reach Zeb, call 436-2244 or toll free 1-866-927-4587. And now, here is Zeb Beth. Oh, thank you and welcome back. We'll have our guest on the air with us momentarily. But first of all, I want to remind everybody about Patterson's Electronics at 421 East Main in Burley. These are really, really nice people to work with, and they've got the best of electronic needs, whether it's home theater systems, video surveillance cameras, uh, televisions by Samsung, Sony, Toshiba, LG TVs, complete sound systems, and they are getting in the new, new, new models of car audio systems. So check it out at 421 East Main in Burley. And that's our friends, Curtis and Lorena and the staff at Patterson's Electronics. Number to call, 678-6997. They're open Monday through Saturday. Saturday, 9 to 6. I want to go to the phone line right now because a friend of this program that's been on this show many, many, many times from California, attorney and political analyst and a darn good singer, too. Good morning, James Herson. How are you? I'm doing well, Zeb. How are you doing? Not too bad, sir. By the way, how's that Christmas album that you recorded doing? Uh, you know, I recorded a, a Christmas album, and I added a tune, and uh, yeah, it's doing great, but I recorded uh, Old Lang Syne, a version of Old Lang Syne. I called it Soul Lang Syne, and that kind of went viral. Uh, you know, there's only one day people want to listen to that. Uh, this one has some elements you don't normally associate <laughs> with the traditional song, but yeah, it went really well and developed some uh, some money to go to Donald Towers, which is this incredible, uh, wonderful charity that uh, uh, builds homes and also pays off mortgages for people in the military and for first responders. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. James, I don't even know where to start because there's such an assault. Uh, I'm a Christian and proud of it. And there seems to be such an assault, a great big frontal assault against Christianity getting worse every day. Uh, would you concur that uh, Christianity's taken some big hits in the media? No, this has been a terrible trend uh, in, the, in the news media, the entertainment media, um, and basically in the culture, and that is um, changing from a culture that was a self-identified Christian-oriented culture in a country founded on Christ Christian principles 
to a culture that's hostile to Christianity, that belittles uh, people of the Christian faith, and people, of who are serious about their faith and other faiths as well, and also um, wants to, in my opinion, but uh, it's the left is responsible for this, and that's their history, wants to uh, diminish and eliminate what the traditional notions of Christianity from public square, from, from society in general. Um, and their motives, who knows, and I, I can speculate, but the important thing is to see this. It's, that it is, it's truly an assault. The ACLU is dedicated to squashing Christian rights, Christian expression, Christian exhibits, and, and, and creating this culture of intimidation. I can't tell you how many parents believe that it's illegal for their children to wear a T-shirt with a Christian message. That, of course, is false, even in public schools. But they've been led to believe that's true by this kind of distorted news reporting that is in the climate we live in. And it, it's outrageous. But, you know, if you look back in time, you look at Hollywood, you look at the films, and you look at the television shows, uh, beginning probably in the 70s, um, Christian characters are depicted as shallow, as uneducated, as bigoted, um, and in a negative way, almost universally. And, and particularly around the holidays of Christmas and Easter, um, both the entertainment media and the news media join together come out with these stories that are insulting and demeaning and even blasphemous to, to Christians. So I think it's, it, it's been happening. I think Christians are aware of it. Um, but it never works in the end um, because it may be trite to say anything, but because God won't let it work. James, are you seeing, because of the climate uh, and the people you know, et cetera, are you seeing any changes? Are you seeing any fighting back? Are you seeing any of the uh, Christians that are still involved in Hollywood, are they standing up and letting their voices be heard, or are they afraid to because of being blacklisted? Well, if you are trying to make it in Hollywood and, you know, I taught at a Christian university that had a relationship with Hollywood. That's Biola University. Um, and students were placed as interns in major Hollywood companies. But they learn very quickly, even if they're not told explicitly, kids that go and work in this very glamorous industry that everybody's trying to break into, they learn that they better not talk publicly in their workplace about Christian principles, even let people know that they're a serious Christian, or their politics. Um, and they, and it's, it's, they learn it non-verbally. You go into the commissary in a major studio, and on the wall you'll see messages. And the, when there's political messages written on the wall, and they're almost all left of center. Uh, matter of fact, they are all left of center. You look at the bumper stickers on the cars, and if you happen to be in the boss's office, you see pictures of the boss with some left-wing politician or leader. Um, and, and so that's the kind of way that people who are young learn that they have to shut up about it and be stealth, kind of what Charlton Heston called a closet conservative. Well, that's true of religion, too. Uh, it would be a closet, closet Christian, if unless you're the type of Christian that practices the false Christianity of, say, candidate Mayor Pete Buttigieg, yeah. which is a, a completely different, non-biblical kind of Christianity. Um, but it, it's it, when you say are people fighting back? There's a whole faith-based film industry that even. Um, Long-time veteran film executives 
can't help but notice have really large profit margins. I mean, you know, spending a few million dollars on a budget and taking in something like $60 million in gross like God's not dead did. Um, or uh, I can only imagine that um, a film about the Christian worship group Mercy Me and they, they notice that because it's a hungry, neglected audience, that you can give them product and they'll devour it. And so, you know, there are people like Kevin Zorbo. He's become uh, basically exclusively a Christian and somewhat conservative filmmaker and is doing very well at it. So I, I think there's a healthy kind of alternative industry it, it gets financing outside of the Hollywood infrastructure and it, and it continues to grow and that's a good thing I got to ask you it might be off the rails a little bit this morning in our discussion but I've got to ask you about what occurred last night at the NCAA college football championships between LSU and Clemson when actor Vince Vaughn went into the presidential box and extended his hand and uh, visited with the first lady and President Trump for a few moments and then all of a sudden the left was going bananas they were jumping out of buildings with their hair on fire trying to condemn Damn this actor for talking to the president. Holy smokes, this world is insane. Yeah, no, no, it is. Uh, it, the way it was done, and this is the way the social media just... Um, a, a particular Twitter account, and, I, and the guy's got a verified account, so I think he might be a reporter. He's a blogger or something, but he's a left-wing guy, and he... And he he writes, sorry to share this video. And it's a video of the actor Vince Vaughn leaning over, having some cordial words at one of the greatest football games, one of the greatest college football games ever played uh, with some two great programs, uh, having a word with someone and being cordial with someone who happens to be the leader of the free world. Vince Vaughn has always been... Um, this kind of uh, square peg in Hollywood in the sense that he's a self-identified libertarian and he's been very vocal about his political beliefs and even though he had uh, he was on top of the world A-lister if you remember Wedding Crashers was a big hit Vince Vaughn teamed up with Owen Wilson it was a good comedy uh, team if you will kind of a crass movie but but Vince, I think, his career has suffered due to his politics. Um, he recently, he, he, I think he even got Academy Award nomination, but he was in, a, in this wonderful war film that Mel Gibson directed. Mel didn't just pick Vince only because of his acting ability, but, but Mel likes to pick out people who have been... <laughs> because Mel understands what it's like to be rejected by the media. So, um, but, you know, Vaughn, it, it, Vince Vaughn is a guy, for example, he's been vocal about the Second Amendment. Now, Hollywood is a joke when it comes to the Second Amendment. You know, they're hypocritical as, as you can believe because they want to take away your ability to defend yourself and your family but they'll have their ability to defend themselves and their families. It's like their opposition to the wall while they live behind the wall, um, in the mansion behind the wall. They have private bodyguards. All the big bodyguards in Hollywood who make a very good living, every one of them is uh, licensed to carry firearms, and or they don't get hired. So this, it's, it's just this, this hypocrite. Well, Vince Vaughn, being a libertarian, has spoken out in favor of the Second Amendment. And when you do that, you go on the current Hollywood blacklist. And so he's just getting, what he's getting now is what we refer to today as the cancel culture, where the social media is used as a weapon to destroy people's careers and destroy their lives if, if, if these um, 
crazy leftists get their way. And these people, if you don't believe that they're absolutely certifiable, all you have to do is look at the story that now James O'Keefe has unveiled a video of backers of Bernie Sanders who, with a straight face, discuss the use of gulags for re-education camps in the United States and say and think it's wonderful and we should put Trump supporters in re-education camps if we get in power. This, this, this is the way the woke generation, the Antifa people, think. Yeah. They are they are in favor of total, totalitarianism, and that's what we're looking at. When I think of people like Jimmy Stewart, John Wayne, Charlton Heston, Tom Selleck, John Voight, it, it, it's a part of Hollywood and the movie industry that these people also had personalities and they had an American spirit and ideal. And I'm thinking of uh, the album that I have over here on my files, uh, John Wayne, America, Why I Love Her. And is all that spirit gone or is there somewhat of a new breed of people in Hollywood that are willing to stand up and let their feelings for this great country stand for Fourth. It's there was there's a good well first of all the rank and file that do the actual um, non acting work in the Hollywood the people that are the technicians the people that work behind the camera the makeup artists the people that are and most of them are in unions and stuff a real significant portion of those people do not subscribe to the lunacy that you hear from the loudmouth left in Hollywood. Um, and there's an awful lot of people who understand the great gift um, that we have in living in the, in the greatest country in the world and how important citizenship is here. Um, there, there's quite a few. As a matter of fact, they formed a secret group of these people so they could support each other years ago, and they ended up disbanding the group. But it's not quite at the level of the golden age. You know, we're talking about people, um, they, they didn't just express love for the country. Uh, you know, they, they basically abandoned their careers temporarily and went into the armed forces. You know, if people don't realize, I mean, we go back, you know, we're talking about, when you mentioned uh, some of these stars, uh, you know, we all know that Elvis went in the Army. A lot of people don't know that Clint Eastwood served mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in the Army. Um, there's just a, a whole host of the of the old stars. It, it, was, it was what everybody did in World, World War II. And so they went into the service, um, and even some of the ones that we consider liberal. Paul Newman served in, in the Navy, um, and, and Paul Newman was a lefty. Paul Newman hated Ronald Reagan, but I dare say that Paul Newman would not be a part of what the Democrat Party is today. And I think even some of the old-line Democrats are are appalled at what they see happening in their party, uh, the party of Harry Truman. It's certainly at a party of John F. Kennedy. It is not that party now. It's the party of uh, Omar and Talib and Ocasio Cortez, the squad, and and you know, yes, Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders who spent his honeymoon in Moscow partying with the communists at the time. Bernie Sanders, who praised Fidel Castro, praised Hugo Chavez, who ran Venezuela into the political toilet and economic toilet. This, these people are praised by Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders is being treated by the media as this benign grandfather. This is a dangerous um, purveyor of totalitarian socialism, and you know he he's he's fun 
to make fun of, but he's he's looking like the front runner now. Yeah, and yeah. that the, if, if they, in a United States party would even consider nominating someone with the politics of Bernie Sanders, that that is no longer uh, a political party that really is associated at all with American values. That is a political party associated with the values of not Vladimir Putin, but Vladimir Lenin. Amen. Amen. I can't tell you how much I appreciate your taking the time to come on my program. As I said, ladies and gentlemen, attorney, political analyst, and an outstanding singer. Caller, I'm sorry, but I'm flat out of time. James Herson, God bless you for what you do. Please come back soon. I'll look forward to it. All right, that sounds great, Jeff. You take care. Have a wonderful day. All right, sir. Thank you very, very much. And to the caller that called in just now, I'm so sorry, but I'm flat out of time. I've got to tell everybody about a great place to go eat. And believe it or not, Deanne and I were headed over there right after the program today, and then our schedule got changed. And I'm talking about Edith's Cafe. Oh, 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 my goodness, the food is good. I've talked to a lot of people that dine there on a frequent basis, and they're saying this is the place. Now, located at 144 East Highway 81 in Burley. They're open Tuesdays through Thursdays, 11 to 8, Fridays and Saturdays, 11 to 9. And I don't care if you want to go in for just a sandwich, whether it's a cheeseburger, chili burger, steak sandwich, or whatever, or if you want to go in for one of the great specials they have in the evening, the food is good. You're going to get portions that are going to fill you up, and you're going to walk out and say, wow, I can't wait to come back again at Edith's Cafe. And they're located at 144 East Highway 81 in Burley, right across from the golf course. We'll see you for a great meal at Edith's Cafe. Right now, I want to tell everybody, too, about our weather sponsor as we go to the weather forecast, and I'm almost out of time. Scarrow's Meats with Don Scarrow and the crew at 331 North Road, Jerome. Oh, my goodness. Go to their website, scarrowsmeats.com, and check out all, all the delicious meats for you, your family, and the uh, gathering that you're going to have. I mean, whether it's the pork ribs, the tri-tips, or whether it's all the different bacons or the sausages, whatever, it's all great from Scarrow's Meats. Right now, here's Gina with the weather. If you don't have to be out on the roadway for today, I would highly suggest you just stay put. Here's a look at your weather forecast. We are expecting more snow. Total daytime accumulations of 1 to 3 inches. Factor in that wind, we definitely have some drifting snow, especially out in the counties. We are expecting a high of about 33 for today. Tonight, so snow showers are going to be tapering off just a little bit. We are expecting another inch of snow for this evening. We are expecting a low right around 15 for tomorrow. A day of reprieve, partly sunny skies, high of 30. Still going to be breezy for Wednesday night. Mostly cloudy skies, low of 22. Thursday, mostly cloudy, high of 38. And back to snow showers for Thursday night with a low of 26. That's a look at your weather for Zebra Thank you. Don Scarrow and the crew at Scarrow's Meats want to welcome you to enjoy the delicious meats at Scarrow's Meats. 331 North Road, Jerome. Telephone number to call, 324-7657. It's true. They are changing the way we eat one delicious bite at a time. Want to give a great big shout out and thank you to our major sponsor. That's, of course, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations. And we've been working with them for a long time on this program and couldn't do it, wouldn't do it without them. They are phenomenal. Don't forget they've got all the tires to get you through whatever the weather throws at you. I urge you to go in and check out all the tread designs. And, of course, don't forget, too, they've got all the tire chains for your winter driving. And, of course, they've got the best in brake service, front in alignment, shocks and struts and batteries, all of this, but customer service always reigns supreme. They are the best at what they do. Stop in and see Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family and Paul, Daniel on Poline and Twin Falls, and Trent on Overland in Burley. The best.
your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. We're going to get out of here. Busy, busy program tomorrow, including our monthly visit with the Idaho Fishing Game. We always say at the end of the program, the way things were, the way things ought to be. But the four most important words, in God we trust. Have a wonderful day. See you tomorrow morning at 8.06.